We set up now a scenario in a global level where we can see the elites in the overpower and the common people don't do nothing or anything. The and common people? Yeah, all the local common people uh, won't be able to do anything. Cause the media, cause the live forms, cause anyway. And there's a movement. We are the activists. And what can we do? Well, what's the difference between the internet communication and the direct action? Well, first of all, the, the role of activists is not just direct action. I mean, direct action has its place. But the direct action, by direct action, you mean like sort of demonstrations or breaking windows or whatever. Uh, that has its place, but its its role is education. It, it's a tactic. It's neither good nor bad in itself. It's just a tactic. And it's a tactic that you carry out. Tactics are judged by their consequences. Okay, They don't have any intrinsic value. Now you ask them, they're good tactics, or they lead to good consequences, otherwise they're bad tactics. But direct action in itself is not a, you know, has no value. Uh, if it is a way of leading to good consequences, yeah, it has value. Well, what are the consequences? I mean, the consequences are education and organization. That's the point of any kind of activism. I mean, sometimes direct action may be a way to do it. Sometimes it may be harmful. Now, that's what you have to ask. Now, what about other techniques like uh, consciousness-raising groups or, you know, uh, uh, working wherever you happen to be to try to get people organized to take control of their own little part of the world, whatever it may be, in the workplace or a community or a family or anything else. Well, that's another kind of activism. Uh, and uh, organizing groups to join the World Social Forum is another kind. Uh, planning on this difference in different countries, but in the United States, uh, one crucial and important kind of activism is simply... Uh, anti-corporate activism. I mean, for the first time ever in the United States, and it's important, there's the beginnings of a movement to try to dismantle corporations. And they are illegitimate institutions. They have no right to exist. Uh, and their control is very fragile. They know it. You know, uh, they, it's, it's in principle easy to, take a, to, to eliminate them and dismantle them. They understand it. Uh, and uh, a large part of the corporate effort to appear benevolent, you know, like give away cheap drugs to the poor and this sort of thing, is an effort to make sure that the population actually can read it in court decisions. Right? They advise them to act benevolent so that an aroused population will not take away their rights, which are artificial rights. Well, you know, for the first time, there's the beginnings of some kind of consciousness about that and groups organizing to do something about it, and little parts of the country which are preventing uh, corporations from functioning and so on. Uh, those could grow into very powerful movements. I mean, it's much more important in the United States than in Hungary, just because of their role in the international economy. But similar things can happen anywhere. Well, what's the right choice? Uh, well, we're back to that question again. It, it depends on an assessment of circumstances, of the conditions in which you live, uh, on your own self-examination, what are you willing to do? Uh, but there, uh, there, there's no reason why which, you know, the common people, everybody, uh, can't be organized on these topics. I mean, people have interests and concerns, and mostly it's the same interests and concerns. Uh, people do feel helpless, but they're made to feel helpless. It's a major effort to make them feel helpless, and they really aren't. You know, there, there are plenty of controls, uh, but uh, controls can be dismantled and overthrown. I mean, after all, we look, you just take a look at the last century, okay? At, at the beginning of the last century, 100 years ago, <coughs> roughly, uh, there were several forms of totalitarianism that were beginning to develop. Okay, one of them was fascism, one was Bolshevism, and a third is corporations. They are all forms of totalitarianism. In fact, they come from the same intellectual roots. They all come from neo-Hegelian ideas about uh, the rights of uh, you know, big organizations over the rights of individuals. And in fact, progressives supported all of them. You know, supported corporatism, supported Bolshevism, and supported fascism. 
uh, Mussolini in particular, had plenty of progressive support, you know, uh, because they all believed in the same ideas. Well, of those three forms of totalitarianism, two have been overcome. The third has extended. Uh, but the third is the weakest of all. I mean, it's held together just by propaganda, not by force. They don't have torture chambers. You know, they don't have secret police. Uh, they have plenty of modes of control, but it's much more fragile. And there's no reason why the general population of the world can't overthrow those, the third one. But of course, you have to be aware of it in the first place. People aren't aware. And then you've got to begin to act at whatever scale you can act and could turn into major social movements. Well, that would be a social revolution, major. Uh, 